How do the major cities compare in Thailand to Philippines? My US dollars do go further here in the Philippines than they do in America. You can live like a king on $500. For the last eight months, I have never cooked a meal. I've eaten out every single meal. I'm not worried when the bill comes. Basically get to eat what I want, order what I want. I don't stay in hostels. I don't stay in low budget hotels. These are things that I like when I travel. I won't even take the cheapest flight. I'm backpacking, I'm living out of two bags, but I'm not on a shoestring budget. You already are financially independent yeah. by yeah. 31. You are an entrepreneur and you're able to live your dream life, shape your dream life, leave the nine to five and go travel the world. The majority of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So on a given month, I will spend between $3,000 and $3,500. Zane Travel, can you walk us through a little bit about your channel? Everybody clicks baits, I click baits. So Zane Travel exposed on the Savvy X. There we go. <laughs> Connection. What's up, Savvy Expats? Today I have a treat for y'all because we are with a world traveler, fellow content creator, YouTuber with over 37,000 subscribers and counting, and also a fellow American from the East Coast. Zane, it's a pleasure to have you on, man. Thank you for being here, Evan. Really glad to be here. Of course, of course. So a little backstory of how I met Zane. I was just scrolling through my YouTube homepage and then I come across his video on his, uh, his experiences in BGC, his first ever Philippine video. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, we're living in the same city, yeah. I gotta reach out to you. And uh, so one thing that struck me about you, Zane, is like you said, you're also from the US. Which part are you from? Yeah, so I grew up in Pennsylvania, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is about 50 minutes away from Baltimore and about 90 minutes away from Philadelphia. But I've lived all over the United States, so I lived in um, Colorado, uh, Washington DC area, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've lived all over the yeah. US. When did you make that transition outside of the US? In actually, it was a year ago to actually like almost exactly a year ago. I felt like it was time. I had just turned 30 years old a year ago and I felt like it was time for me to book a one-way ticket. I always wanted to go to Asia. I always wanted to be a digital nomad. And I felt like this is the time. This is the time for me to do it. So mm. I booked a one-way ticket to Thailand, which is a place I always wanted to go. And then, yeah, I've been here since February. Amazing, so, yeah. amazing. So before we dive into all the countries you've been to around Southeast Asia, you mentioned that you wanted to be a digital nomad. Yeah. What did you do previously for work back in the US? Yeah, so for work, I was a, I started off my career as a web designer developer. I worked for a large university mm -hmm. and I did that for about five years. And then I quit my job in 2019 to be an entrepreneur, full-time entrepreneur, and I've been full-time entrepreneur for four years now. And uh, yeah, now I, now I work on Zane Travel full-time. So, I love that, I love yeah. that. So you, pay, you basically are doing the FIRE movement, financial independence. Uh, so retirement. yeah, I mean, more or less. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, not exactly, but yeah, I do know about the FIRE movement, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and that's something that a lot of Americans are really picking up on these days is yeah. uh, escaping that rat race, yeah. that nine to five to go live wherever they want, work Absolutely. when they want and have their own hours. Yeah. Um, how has that experience been for you? I mean, you're pretty fresh into uh, financial independence here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely very liberating to be able to say goodbye to your job. <laughs> um, you know, I was definitely, I don't know, I feel like it just, for me, I hit a point with my, with my nine to five where I, I wanted to be calling the shots, basically. And uh, yeah, I felt like if I continued working, like, go, like in an office, going into the office, working a desk job, that it just, I wouldn't be where I want to be in life. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, it's definitely very liberating. And at the same time, I will say, with entrepreneurship or FIRE or whatever you want to do, um, you will end up working a lot more. Absolutely. So this is, I think, a misconception that people have like, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber, I'm going to do like whatever, I'm going to build my own business and I'm just going to do, I'm going to do the four hour work week. <laughs> Tim Ferriss it, style. Which is great. Like, I love the four hour work week. I've read that book multiple times, but it actually, in the beginning, it takes many, many hours mm -hmm. to get started. Yeah. And so I actually work more as an entrepreneur than when I worked my normal mm -hmm. nine to five. So, yeah, it's the reality that a lot of people don't see behind the scenes, but 
Another thing is that it's a lot more fulfilling, right? It's a lot more fulfilling. And you're doing what you want to do and you're building what you want to build. Yeah. Of course. So can you walk us through a little bit about your channel and what yeah. you posted? Yeah. So I have some experience on YouTube before and basically I decided that I really wanted to take this year to do international travel and you know, I had never left the country before. I had never done any international travel. I was 30 at the time and I figured like this was, this was time for me to do this. And so part of that was I noticed a trend on YouTube with travel vloggers mm -hmm. and specifically people who do raw travel vlogs. Cause I'm definitely not the only one. I'm sure many people who are watching have seen other travel vloggers. Um, but I decided that that's what I wanted to try doing. Mm. So before I left the States, I bought a GoPro and I already had a laptop and yeah, I basically put everything that I wanted to put into two backpacks. I've been traveling in two backpacks. Um, and yeah, that's how I decided I was going to travel. And basically I've just been documenting the journey since February. Mm. So wow. yeah, I've been, I think my first travel video upload was on February 23rd of this year. And yeah, I've been posting three to four videos a week since February. Wow. And yeah, pretty happy with the growth so far. I think there's there's definitely more room to go, but pretty happy with it overall. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I've been witnessing the pa the growth over the past few weeks and I'm like, wow, this channel is really growing so yeah. much. Yeah. And so here we are eight months later, uh, you left the US, uh, how many months ago? Eight months ago? Yeah around eight months yeah. ago February, and yep. the first ticket you booked was to Thailand. Thailand, correct? Yes. How long were you in Thailand for? Uh, about five weeks was my first trip. Five weeks. Yeah. And I imagine, you know, you're living in the U.S. your whole entire life and I wouldn't say Pennsylvania is the most like happening state, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, what was that transition like to be in like such a unique environment, completely different to the U.S.? Yeah, that's what, what I was really craving because like I had imagined that there was an energy in Asia, especially in like a place like Thailand that just wasn't in the United States. And um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like really hard to describe. It's mm -hmm. really hard to describe. I would recommend that you book your own ticket to Thailand and just experience it for yourself. I mean, the I think a couple of things that stand out is it feels like there's always something going on in a place like Thailand or even in a place like the Philippines. Like it, Vietnam is the same way. It feels like there's always something going on versus like in rural Pennsylvania or even in the cities I lived in. It's a little bit um, less exciting. Right. <laughs> it's a little bit right. less exciting. And you know some of the other things that have kind of like that I would that I would highlight in terms of what is different. There's like a really big street food culture. Oh yeah. So like a lot of pe a lot of people come to my videos to watch me eat street food, and that's certainly something that you can't find in America. And the street food that you can get in a place like Thailand is like insane. It's some of the best food that you'll eat, and really? it's just yeah. from a cart on the side of the road. So yeah, another thing is like people just seem to be living life. I would mm. say in Thailand, like I've, I've noticed this actually. Um, in many places in Asia where people just seem to be really living life instead of existing. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, yeah there's can a few you, of the highlights. But yeah. can you expand on that more? Like, what do you mean by like, people are living life yeah. in Asia? <sighs> yeah, so, okay, so we went out and had burgers yesterday at, Pink's. Pink, at Pink's and we had Not a really sure. good burger. And I think I said to you, Evan, I'm like, do you notice how people are just kind of like with their friends, like, it's, it was like 6.30, 7 yeah. o'clock. People were, you know, having a beer, having a meal, having a burger, whatever. There's like really nice lights. Like the, the place is really lit up in a nice way. It's really peaceful. And it seems like people weren't really worried about anything except mm -hmm. spending time with their friends and family and having a good time. And mm -hmm. like people are really living. Like there's no fear of safety. There's no fear of what's going to happen tomorrow or like, what do I have to do tomorrow? Right. I would say like people are really in the now here. Wow. Like people are really existing in the now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see it in the people in Asia, not yeah. just in the Philippines, but in Asia, like yeah. when you're talking to them, it's not like 
It's not like the US where you're like, okay, wrap it up. I have bills to pay. I got work to go to. I got to get to this meeting. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which there is a time and place for that. We all have priorities. But here yeah. in Asia, like you said, uh, people are just living life. They're completely present. Yeah. And it's, yeah, there's a certain energy about it that you really just don't get in the West. Um, in the West, it's just the daily monotonous routine. You go through every single day. But here in the Philippines and in Asia, like you mentioned, there's so much more that it has to offer. Something's always happening and going on. Right. right. And you're meeting people that are present. Now, so you're in Thailand for five weeks. Uh, we'll dig more into that experience uh, a little bit later. But um, can you give us like your itinerary of the amount of countries where yeah. you traveled to over the past yeah, eight months? Yeah, I'd love to do that. So yeah, so I hit nine countries in seven months. I've been here in BGC in the Philippines for a month. So it's been eight months now in Asia. Um, yeah, so I hit nine countries and actually revisited three countries. So like 12 different trips. Started off in Thailand, uh, went to Philippines after that. So my first Philippines trip was two months. I went a bunch of places in the Philippines, fell in love with the Philippines, which is why I'm back here now. And I plan to spend the Burr months here at the very least, and we'll see, maybe even longer. That's the plan, at least right now. Um, even potentially making Philippines a base for me, but we'll, we'll see. Um, after the Philippines, I did Vietnam, uh, and that's an amazing place. I revisited Vietnam. It's one of the countries I revisited. Mm -hmm. um, actually, those are the three countries I revisited, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam. Um, and I think those countries will always be special to me because they're my first three countries, and it's just it was an amazing time to start mm -hmm. off everything. After that, I went to uh, Malaysia, did that for like two weeks, went to Singapore for two or three days, um, then I went to Indonesia, back to Vietnam, then I went to Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and now I'm back here. Wow. So, so yeah, that's that's where it's been. About so, two to three yeah. weeks per country, okay. but the countries I really, really love, I've spent like a month or so, yeah, a month right. or more. Yeah. So Thailand and Philippines. Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where in Vietnam did you did you go to? Um, Ho Chi Minh. The first time I stayed there three weeks, and I spent the entire three weeks in Ho Chi Minh City because mm -hmm. I really love that city. I think it's like kind of underrated. Um, a lot of backpackers do go to Vietnam, but um, I hear a lot of people talk about Philippines and Thailand, mm -hmm. but Vietnam's really great. So oh, so yeah. really just. Um, second trip, I went back to Ho Chi Minh, then I went to Da Nang, Hoi An, and uh, gosh, what was the other one? Hanoi. Hanoi. Yeah. Okay. So you've been to a handful of uh, countries in yeah. Southeast Asia in such a uh, short amount of time, actually, yeah. but enough time to actually experience the culture, the people. And uh, my question is, let's, uh, Let's actually dive into the comparisons between Philippines and these countries. Okay. A lot of us like foreigners and expats that are looking at where to move to in Southeast Asia for a good cost of living, we want to yeah. compare them. Should we live in Thailand? Should we live in the Philippines? Yeah. Um, so let's start with uh, Thailand and the Thailand Philippines. Philippines. So we're talking cost of living? Let's talk, okay. yeah, cost of living. Yeah, cost of living. Yeah. So it's actually interesting. Some people might be surprised by this, I'm not sure, but Thailand's cheaper. So mm. Thailand's actually considerably cheaper yeah. than just about any country, actually. Thailand and Vietnam are the cheapest, but, so Thailand versus Philippines, um, accommodation for what you get in Thailand is the best. So oh, you're yeah. going to spend less money in Thailand for what you get on accommodation. Food's also cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, is it better? I would say Thailand's food is the best. Oh, it's healthier for sure. I would say Thailand's food is better than any of the food, not just Philippines, but it's like, I think Thai food is the best food, yeah, like yeah. in all of Asia. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Actually, Thai food might be the best food in the world. I don't know. It's, it's very, very good. Um, yeah. So yeah, food, accommodation. Um, yeah. And I guess like Philippines is interesting because I wasn't expecting it to be as expensive as it is. Like, I see a lot of videos where people are like living on, like I've seen videos as, as low as $500 a month. That's, um, yeah, people, people live on $500 a month. I'm not saying that they're lying. I'm certainly not like saying that they're lying or anything. I'm just saying like, I would have a very hard time living on $500 a month in the Philippines. Like, in yeah. fact, I think it would be more like surviving. Even in Thailand. Wouldn't that It'd be, be very in Thailand? Hard. It'd be also yeah. very hard. Yeah. So I've noticed that food and accommodation in Philippines is more expensive than in yeah. Thailand, actually more expensive than 
Other places in Southeast Asia, not not including Singapore. Singapore is extremely expensive. Oh yeah. yeah. Like actually just, I think Singapore is the most expensive, even more expensive than Japan and Korea. So I know you said talk about Thailand and Philippines and I kind of went on a tangent, but um, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So, so. And, and, and that's why I'm assuming yeah. you were in Singapore for only two, three two days. Two days, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and also in, at the same time, it's like when you're in Singapore, it's just so, I guess, perfect. So it's you don't perfect. Have to be Singapore there is amazing. I will be back. I will be back. It's just, it's very expensive there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super. So cost of living in Thailand is considerably more affordable than the Philippines. I would say so. Yeah. A lot of us, Maybe yeah. 20%, maybe 20% yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Because when I was looking at like property prices in Thailand, I'm like, there's these beautiful modern villas on the beach and it only costs like 400, 500 dollars per month yeah. with a pool in it. And I go here, we, we're here in the Philippines and like, I don't sugarcoat anything on the channel. We talk a lot of good about BGC and whatnot, but you do not get that kind of value in the Philippines yeah. compared to Thailand. Yeah. And that's just the reality. But one thing that I think a lot of our followers see is considerably better in the Philippines is of course language. How has that been with you for you? Yeah, I'm glad you said that. So there are really two main reasons why I've spent the most time, well three I should say, three reasons why I've spent the most time in the Philippines and three reasons why I would make the Philippines a base out of any country and the big one is the language. So, mm -hmm. so English is one of the national languages in the Philippines. Right. Um, which is huge. I've never had any language issues here. Can I go through the other three? Of course. Okay, so so language is a big one. Um, the other one is the very friendly visa situation for, especially if your nationality is American. Mm -hmm. um, you can stay here for a very long time legally on a tourist uh, visa. And then the third one is just the friendliness of the people. And I know like everybody says that, but it's really true. Like if you've never been to the Philippines, it's shocking how friendly people are yeah. um, and how like welcoming people are. So those, those are the three things that, yeah, okay, you might spend a little bit more in the Philippines, but honestly, it really makes sense. For it, sure. it really makes sense. That is another thing though, actually, that now that I'm talking about this, visas are more expensive in Thailand. Really? So if we're comparing Thailand and the Philippines, I would say visas are more expensive. Okay. I think, yeah, I mean, so like, if you want to stay in Thailand for a long time, you can buy an elite visa, but that's 900,000 baht, which is like $26,000. And how long does that get five you? Five years, five years. That's it? Yeah, that's so that's, that's kind of very expensive. expensive. That's pricey, yeah. It's, it's pricey. You can also do an ed visa, an yeah. education visa, and that's going, I, I believe that will cost more than renewing your tourist visa here. Really? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Because yeah. what a lot of a lot of our um, my friends do here is like they just stay here in the Philippines, and once their tourist visa expires and they need to reset it, they just take a quick flight out back to go back to the U.S. Yeah. or back home, or yeah, or to any nearby Asian country. Absolutely. Uh, and you only have to be out of the country for a day, and then you can come back to the Philippines. Yeah. But anyway, so. Yeah, cost of living in Thailand is a lot more affordable. I think the visas is probably the only exception to that. Yeah, um, I would say so. I think, yeah, value in Thailand and Vietnam is a lot better. Yeah, it's insane. A it's, lot better. It might be like, it's hard to find another place in the world that would beat Thailand and Vietnam. Yeah. yeah. But that brings me actually to my next point. So value in Thailand and Vietnam is great, but in, in the beaches and, and the provinces, but like, how do the major cities compare in Thailand to like BGC, Philippines? So when I was considering a base, like, yeah, for myself in Asia, it really came down to Bangkok and BGC. Mm -hmm. And Chiang Mai is really cool, but I personally wouldn't live in, Ch Chiang Mai is a city in Thailand. Um, I personally wouldn't live in Chiang Mai because the infrastructure there is not, you pretty much need a motorbike, like you need a motorbike mm -hmm. in Chiang Mai. Um, the cities in, Thailand, for me, the one that I'm most impressed by is Bangkok. Bangkok. Um, and a lot of people would say the same thing. I would say that the cities are, are a bit better in uh, Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, even though Manila gets like a bad rap. Yeah. I think yeah. the reason why Manila gets a bad rap is because it's rapidly developing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I also think like there are certainly places in Manila that you don't want to find yourself, like Tondo, yeah. but you'd still probably be fine. Yeah. You know, you'd oh, still yeah. probably be fine in Tondo. I'm not saying you should do that, but you, <laughs> but like people are just very friendly here. So like, I would probably give cities the edge in Philippines mm -hmm. um, because we have places here like BGC and Makati and Ortigas 
that are all part of the Manila metro area. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll eventually get into like why you ended up moving to BGC and uh, I don't know if you want to release it on, but like you're actually considering making BGC your home base, yeah. right? We'll get into that more, but um, just to wrap up comparisons with these countries, uh, another country that a lot of expats and especially digital nomads are debating between with the Philippines is Bali. So how was your experience <laughs> in Bali? Yeah, yeah. So Bali, can I also say, like, I'm going to talk about Bali in a second, but the, I will say, I do need to give this one extra point to Thailand, which is the, the metro system in oh, Thailand. Yeah. So, so one thing that I, I don't like about Manila is the, the metro system doesn't go through BGC. So not yet. Not yet. Not it yet. will. Yeah, it will. But uh, yeah, so like public transportation here is a little bit challenging. Okay. So, so Bali, Bali is not for me. Bali is not for me. So I um, had, when I went to Bali, I basically had like many months of very authentic travel experiences. Mm -hmm. And then I got to Bali and I'm like, it's just all foreigners. Like yeah. it's all foreigners. Versus in a place like Manila or Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh City, there are foreigners there, but there are also many locals, like mm -hmm. many, many locals. Maybe I was in the wrong spot in Bali. I was in Chenggu in Bali, which is where a lot of digital nomads go, mm -hmm. but it just felt like it was overrun by, overrun by uh, foreigners. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get the authentic travel experience that I really craved mm -hmm. there. Um, it was also considerably expensive compared right. to the rest of Indonesia. And um, right now, at the time of this recording, there's a ton of construction going on in Chenggu. And this is actually, if you do research on like a Bali trip, you'll, you'll find people on forums and comments say that the construction there is very annoying. And oh, yeah. yeah, it's very, the construction is very annoying in, in Bali. So you kind of like don't get good sleep there right now. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so yeah. yeah, there are some things, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Like if you love to surf, which I don't surf. But if you love to surf, I mean, apparently Bali is like the best place. Um, Balinese people are very friendly. Mm. They, they are very friendly. Um, yeah, I, I had a good time in Ubud, Ubud, which Ubud is like more foresty, like there are waterfalls and mm. like hiking trails and stuff in Ubud. And I had a better time in Ubud than I did in Chengdu. So yeah, I would I go back, that. but as a solo traveler who's really, really, really wants authentic travel experiences, it's not my number one destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's certainly like pros and cons between all these Asian yeah. countries. Uh, the Philippines stands out as being like the English being the second most spoken yeah. language. Thailand, of course, you get the value there. Bangkok's a beautiful city. Strong internet we talked about yep. as well. Yeah. Um, anything, anything that you'd give to Vietnam? Any reason why an expat might choose Vietnam? Vietnam is like my third choice. If you love coffee, there's, there's literally no better coffee in the world. Yeah, in Vietnam, true. the yeah. coffee culture is insane. I always talk, I've talked about this in multiple videos. There's a slow culture around coffee where you see people just kind of, so like in Vietnam, like instead of having, so in Vietnam, basically they put lawn chairs, like what I would call a lawn chair on the sidewalk. And basically you can order food, you can order coffee, and then you sit on the lawn chair and you kind of just talk to the person next to you or you go there with your friends and it's this really like, I'm not worried about what's going on. I just need to drink my coffee or have my bowl of pho and enjoy the day. Wow. And that's like a really incredible thing about Vietnam that I think you need to experience. Um, people are also very friendly there. Uh, I would say it's, it might be cheaper than Thailand. It might even be, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's hard to say. It's like one of the two, like Thailand sure. or Vietnam. So yeah, I don't know. I definitely wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see people choose Vietnam over Thailand or right. Philippines. I, I do think yeah. Vietnam is probably the most affordable, yeah. um, but is it also less developed, would you say? Less developed, there is no metro there. At least no I metro. didn't find a metro, I, don't, okay. I, I didn't find one. And yeah, it's definitely less developed. And then in Thailand and Vietnam, was there any language barriers? Like, was it tough to get around? With no, that? I wouldn't say tough, but there's definitely like, you're not just gonna strike up a random conversation. Oh yeah, for sure. Exactly. For sure. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a lot harder to just like strike up a random conversation compared to. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Like we were walking on High Street, like the center, the heart of BGC yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And uh, the man himself got recognized by a, a fan of the channel. Said hi to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it just st struck up a quick conversation yeah. there. And yeah. uh, like we said, living in the present moment and yeah. yeah, they're happy to see you. Now, uh, getting into why you moved to the Philippines or why you're considering it as your home base, 
Any particular main reasons you'd, you'd say? Yeah, so like, I, I'm just gonna re-answer that, which is like language, visa situation, mm. and friendliness of people. Um, also, like those are the big, the, the three, the big three. My, my dollars, my US dollars, do go further here in the Philippines than they do in America. Um, it is still, it, it, I would say Philippines, especially if you stay in a place like BGC, is more expensive than other places in Asia, but it's still considerably cheaper than America. So I would say those are like the four reasons why I would make it a base here. I think the language one is really big. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What made you choose BGC? Like you could have gone to Cebu, Davao, um, the first place, yeah. yeah. What made you choose BGC? So one of the things I do as a full-time traveler is I definitely do research on the countries before I go, go to them, um, which sounds basic, but I, I definitely spend quite a bit of time researching, like what's the best place, what's the, what's the wealthy area, what's the developed area, where's the area that has really good street food, so forth and so on. And BGC always came up on the list. It was always BGC, Makati, and then another big one was Cebu. Um, and I did go to Cebu, uh, Cebu and I spent time there, but BGC is like, I mean, you have a whole, basically a whole channel dedicated to it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just, um, it is an extremely clean, comfortable, safe city. Mm. And I would say it's very similar to Singapore. Really? Very, very, it's actually without the, the closest Singaporean thing. Without the prices. <laughs> yeah, without the same crazy prices, exactly. I, I would say it's like the closest thing to Singapore is BGC. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, yeah, that's, that says a lot about the city, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's coming from someone who's been to all, almost yeah. many of the countries in Southeast yeah. Asia. So uh, what's your, can you give like a ballpark estimate of your cost of living in BGC? Yeah, well, so BGC, so I will just say, um, my cost of living in seven months in Southeast Asia. So I can't really do BGC. I'll, I'll give you my cost of living in seven months sure. traveling through Southeast Asia. So on a given month, I will spend between $3,000 and $3,500 mm -hmm. a month. Um, so I would just split it down the middle and say $3,200 a month is about what I spend traveling. $3,200. And I'll be interested to see, I'm gonna read the comments because yeah. I think there's gonna be cross-channel uh, cross viewership here. I think some people from my channel are going to uh, yeah. watch. And it's a question I get all the time, which is, Zane, how do you afford to travel? Um, how, how can I become a full-time traveler? How much do you spend? So I'm glad to answer the question. Yeah. Um, I do want to see in the comments though, because I think some people are going to be surprised that I spend 3,200 a month. And I think yeah. some people are going to be shocked that I don't spend more. Like, yeah, I think there's going to be a yeah. little bit of both because, you know, I'm backpacking, I'm living out of two bags, but I'm not on a shoestring budget. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm not on a shoestring budget. So, so yeah, we're the first to know about yeah. your, your travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Zane yeah. travel exposed on the Savvy exposed. Expat. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So you're spending around like 3,200 ish per month. And um, of course, it's not like a typical backpackers budget, right? Yeah. Um, but it actually makes sense because you're not just settled down. Like I'm sure if you were to settle yeah. down in one place. It's considerably cheaper. Considerably cheaper, but you're constantly traveling, experiencing new things, getting content, eating out. So yeah. of course that, that makes sense to me. I'd actually also, if you don't mind, I'm sorry to cut you off. It, I would like to expand on that because like, I actually believe that I've been living like a king. Mm. So, mm. so I've, I've actually heard this expression all over YouTube, which is like, you can live like a king on $500. It's the and ultimate clickbait title. It's a great clickbait. I get it. Everybody clicks baits. I click. I've used it. I understand. Yeah, I get and it. It works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so like for me, I'd like to actually define what living like a king is like, because I actually feel like I have for the last eight months. Mm. So for me, living like a king is I have never cooked a meal in the last eight months. So uh, I've eaten out every single meal. Um, I'm not worried when the bill comes. Yeah. So basically, if I want to order steak, I can order steak, and I'm not worried about the bill. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to get a few drinks, if I want to have a few beers, or even if I want to go out to another bar, not worried about it. Um, basically, get to eat what I want, order what I want. And then another big part of, for me, like living like a king would be, I don't stay in hostels. Mm -hmm. So I've never stayed in a hostel. I don't stay in low budget hotels. I will do budget hotels, but not like super low budget. Yeah. So I'll do like a mix of budget hotels, mid-range hotels, and even resorts. Mm -hmm. So like when I went to Pang Lao on my first trip, I stayed at the Henan Alona Beach, and that's like over $100 a night. I stayed there four nights. Mm -hmm. So so 
actually it was like a mix of Hen and Tawala and mm. Hen and Alona. But that's something, again, like if I'm, if, I, if I'm saying I live like a king, basically I'm not, I'm not in a hostel. Yeah. I'm not doing hostels. I'm not sharing bathrooms. Yeah. I'm, I'm not worried about cockroaches. Like these are things that I like when I travel. So yeah. these, are, these are like the comforts that I want when I travel. The other thing is, the third thing is flights. Like I won't even take the cheapest flight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I really wanted to, I really wanted to fly Korean Air, so I spent more money to fly Korean Air. I love it. Yeah. So, so yeah. those are kind of the three bullet points on like what does living like a king look like. Um, that that's yeah. kind of kind of how I I've think, been, been doing it. Yeah. And I think that's actually nice to hear that you can have that sort of lifestyle that you just listed off for three thousand plus. So budget. to put that in context, I won't say the exact amount, but like. $3,200 a month is considerably less than what I was spending in America. Mm, so even still, like you're still so, living. So 3,200, yeah. so consider this, consider that in America right now, in October, 2023, median rent is $2,000. Yeah. Uh, median mortgage payment is $2,200. Wow. So I'm spending $3,200. You, you can quickly see how that would add up in America, right? If you're spending $2,000 on rent and then food's extremely expensive, transportation's extremely expensive, gas is extremely oh, yeah. expensive, right? So those things I don't have to worry about as much. Right. And I've, get, I've been able to experience nine countries. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so. So with a lower cost of living. With so a lower cost of living. Ballpark yeah. in the US, if you don't mind, uh, what was your cost of living back in Pennsylvania? In Well, so the last place I lived was DC. So, okay. um, when I was in Pennsylvania, it was like I had roommates. I was like fresh out of college. With roommates, it was honestly close to like three thousand. So that that was with roommates. Three, that was like three thousand. Oh, three thousand with roommates. Wow. Yeah. Um, like like maybe a little bit less, but like around around there. And that's that's when I had roommates. Denver was much more. Actually, don't even want to. Denver was like over four thousand, I believe. And then DC was. I'm not even going to say how much DC was. DC is just an extremely expensive place. I think yeah. that was the last place I lived, and it's one of the most expensive places to live in the world, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think even just hearing it being over four thousand as a single person, that's that's insane to me. Yeah. So you're living like a king around Asia for less than how much it costs to live in the U.S. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I just love hearing how the kind of lifestyle you have for that kind of budget, because while a lot of people might be like. Three thousand dollars in Asia—that's so expensive. That's too much, man. Yeah. Um, we all have our own lifestyle preferences. Yeah. I can almost already smell the hate coming. Oh, I can smell the hate. The hate's <laughs> I coming. I can smell the hate coming. Yeah. Oh, you're snobby. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah, but that's—I I love that you're living that kind of lifestyle. So, um, in BGC, like in a week, do you have uh, a rough amount that you'd say you spent here? BGC, like, I just found like a really good deal on. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so should keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay, I found a really good deal on an Airbnb. I spent two hundred and fifty dollars for one week at an Airbnb over at one one uptown residence. So that, so two hundred fifty dollars for my Airbnb. Um, you, I would say you can expect to spend between two hundred and fifty and three hundred fifty on an Airbnb for one week mm -hmm. here. Um, and then food is typically around a, for me. For me, food is typically around a thousand pesos per meal. So, oh, okay. so maybe like uh, maybe like a thousand to two thousand pesos for two meals mm -hmm. um, here. So otherwise, I mean, what else? I, I currently haven't been drinking, so yeah. so there hasn't been any like beer beer expenses. Um, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. And this you far, can definitely do it cheaper. I do. Yeah. Like I definitely I know that there will be hate, but. Like if I was just in BGC, I guess I could make it on 15. It just, from my perspective, like on $1,500 a month, like half of your money is gonna go to rent. Oh yeah. Um, and then that means you're probably not gonna be able to take a trip to Boracay. Mm -hmm. You're probably not gonna be able to take a trip to Cebu, mm -hmm. maybe once every two months or right. something like that. But if you wanna get up and go, I would I would recommend 3,000. I would really yes. recommend 3,000 yes. for like, if you want to do what I'm like, if you watch my channel and you want to do what I'm doing, I would recommend 3000. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great figure that you, yeah. you put out there because I've been saying that for like two, the whole duration of the channel. Yeah. And I've gotten a lot of kickback from that. Like Evan, it's the Philippines, like 500 man, 500, like 500 is not going to buy you anything here. Yeah. So like 
yeah, 3,000 is pretty ideal if you want to live life. Like if you really want to yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in not just exist. So in, like you said, it's if you want to also travel and experience the country. Where are you going next week? Yeah, next week I'm going to start a trip in uh, going to Ilo Ilo. Yeah. And uh, going to hit uh, Bakla, Dumaguete, Cebu, Sikihor, uh, sure probably yeah. Siargo go all over maybe even Davao we'll see but yeah I actually don't have it all mapped out yet that's another thing that I really love is that I don't I don't actually have a plan right now I just know that I'm I'm leaving yeah yeah I love it for the time being awesome yeah and yeah, yeah guys so stay tuned for Zane's content yeah. when he goes down yeah. south because I mean that's a lot of places you're going to be checking yeah. out um now you said you were going to consider you're considering BGC as a as a home base um what were like your first impressions of the city when you first came here? Um, I couldn't believe how clean and well organized everything is. Like you barely see any trash mm -hmm. in uh, BGC. There's like absolutely not a trash problem here. Um, the skyscrapers, uh, the amount of food options, everything feels like when I was living in an American city. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually I visited BGC before I went to places like Tokyo and Seoul and Singapore. So when I first got to BGC, which was all the way back in April, I immediately thought like I was back in the US. Mm. It was my first, was my first impression. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it really felt like back at home, but yeah. in Asia, yeah, it does, Asian prices. I would say like, if there's one place for me personally, as an American that feels like home, it would be BGC for sure. Wow. For sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's why our family also chose BGC. Yeah. And uh, we, we were talking to, you know, Merjum vlogs. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So a, a lot of you guys who watch this channel, of course, no merge him. He's a huge uh, BGC content creator. And he was saying yesterday that there's like, there's so many American families moving there's to, so many here. to yeah. BGC. Cause yeah. like, it feels like home for us while yeah. still being in Southeast Asia. Yeah. And then he's like, the competition is rising. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you and I were both uh, competition, I guess. But uh, I, I love how BGC is becoming the spot the spot yeah. in not only the BGC Philippines. BGC is the absolute spot right now. But in yeah. Southeast Asia. Yeah. And uh, it's, 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 it's absolutely insane I love seeing that um so what was like your first I suppose culture shocks of living in the Philippines um let's see here I would say like it's actually quite shocking how willing people are to like invite you in their home or you know say hi to you or give you a red horse or like you know whatever it is like that's actually quite shocking and just like like I would say in America, people are very quick to have casual conversations, like which which is not the same in other places. Like you don't really have casual con conversations in a place like Tokyo or Seoul. Um, but in the Philippines, it's not just casual conversations. It's like people really, really just being going out of their way to be extremely friendly. So yeah. so it, it's more than just a casual conversation here. Um, so yeah, that was definitely one thing. Um, what are some other shocking things? Honestly, so like you read like horror stories about, oh, Manila is like the most dangerous city in Southeast Asia. Mm. Um, and I definitely read those things. Like I, I read those blogs before I came here. Like, and I even questioned like, should I go to Manila? You know, is it really, is, is it really that dangerous? And my first five days in Manila were actually in Binondo. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I even walked around Binondo at night and I made a video about this and, you know, somebody just kind of like jumped out at me and said, welcome to the Philippines. You know, it was like, it was like a very, very welcoming thing. So like, even in a place like Binondo, I've never felt unsafe. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely something that was surprising to me simply because of everything I had read, mm -hmm. um, that this is, you know, this is a dangerous place and whatever. So that, so that also came as a surprise. So I would say those are kind of kind of some of the immediate For things. Sure. Yeah. So some like preconceived notions about the country yeah. was broken, uh, seeing how safe it was. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, you have to be like weary about your surroundings if you're outside of like BGC and certain other cities yeah. in Manila. But yeah, for the most part, I don't think it's as dangerous as people no. yeah. put it out to be. Yeah. Yeah. So those were your culture shocks. How about in Southeast Asia in general? Uh, first time traveling outside the US, I'm sure you had a few. Yeah, I would say uh, definitely I knew about the cost being lower, but just experience the cost is definitely, definitely something that has been nice. Um, culture shocks as well. I would say also 
I don't know, is this culture? I don't know, maybe this is culture shocks, but like I would also say like safety is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, in nine countries and eight months, I've never once felt unsafe. So, wow. so yeah, th th that's like a big thing for me as a traveler. Um, so yeah, otherwise, some immediate things. Okay, so other things about culture, there's like a really big uh, push towards family mm. in Asia. Yeah. Uh, that I would say is simply not present in America, especially in the Philippines. Like people seem to really put their family first. Oh, absolutely. Um, and family being not just wife or husband, but family being mom, dad, brother, sister, like whole extended family. Mm -hmm. um, really put, put your family first in Asia. The other thing is there seems to be like a, um, like a really big culture around, okay, I'll put it a different way. People are not as isolated here. Mm. People are not as isolated here. America, for those who don't know, maybe people are, have, you've only lived in Asia, you've never been to America. America is a very isolated place for, for a bunch of reasons. But one of the main reasons is like, America is a very large country in terms of land mass. So like people tend to be isolated. Mm -hmm. um, also people tend to be a little bit more lonely because, because actually I don't know why. Actually, I don't actually have, have <laughs> and answer why, but it feels like people are, are very lonely in America. And I don't see people be looking, at least appearing to be lonely here. Here, yeah. Yeah, so, th so those are some of the things, yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned that, yeah. like loneliness, because I had another uh, another lady on the channel, her name is Corin from Las yeah, yeah. Vegas, and she was talking about uh, how, I think, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but like a sergeant general in the US declared that loneliness is an epidemic in the US. Yep. And I was like, wow, it's that serious. Yeah. Because I knew that people are lonely in the States, but I didn't know that to the point where it has to be on the press, it has to be made public, like this is a yeah. real issue in the US. Yeah. What do you think that could be attributed to? Um, why is loneliness at an all time high back at home? I genuinely, I have no idea other than like, the barrier to entry to do things such as if you want to go out and have like a beer and a burger and you want to meet up with your friends, the barrier to entry on that is quite high. Like it's, it's quite expensive mm -hmm. to go get drinks and a burger here. I think our burgers last night was like $9. It's like, it's like $9 for two burgers and an, and yeah. an appetizer. And that was an American establishment. And that was a, it was called pigs. Yeah. It was an American yeah. establishment. So you're looking at like $4 a person. Right. In America, that's going to be at least double people for the most part in America live paycheck to paycheck. So this is another thing that I think there's a misconception about America that Americans have a lot of money when in reality, the majority of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So I think like the financial situation has something to do with the loneliness epidemic, which I've, I've heard this term used before the loneliness epidemic. So I, it's definitely a thing. Another thing is there's a different, um, there's a more progressive culture in America around family unit. Mm -hmm. So like me, for example, you know, I left, I like, I still very much love my family and I'm with my family, still talk to them. I didn't leave my family, but I physically separated from my family in terms of distance. So like I lived in Colorado, I lived in DC, my family was in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Of course we keep in contact on the phone and everything and I see them when I can. But like in America, it's very, it's, it's very common to leave home. It's For very sure. common to leave home. Yeah. 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 That, those are two great points. Um, just financially, it's not practical to yeah. go out in the U S yeah. like people have to pay bills and, uh, wages don't really cover the cost of living, uh, that that's present right now in the States. Yeah. So, and then secondly, like you said, is, uh, just the independence culture. We have a different culture in the U.S. where once you're 18, it's time to get out of the house and yep. start yep. working. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. here in the Philippines, something I found, uh, especially even amongst like a little bit older friends here, is that uh, you don't leave the house at 18 here. You leave the house when you get married or, or if you find a job. But like typically once marriage is uh an option there then that's when most people move out even if you're in your 30s you could still be living with your family here yeah and there's no i guess shame or no yeah shaming around sure here sure in Asia. yeah absolutely yeah. is yeah. that the same in the other southeast asian countries yeah oh really yeah uh, yeah I, I i believe so from what i understand it's it's not uncommon for people to live with their family all the way up to marriage yeah wow, wow. yeah is there any country for you that like stood out um in terms of like uh, 
the people, other than the Philippines being like very friendly, very kind? Um, you know, I, I was talking to one of my best friends about this. It seems like if it's an island country, so like Philippines, sure. Indonesia, Taiwan, these just the people living on the islands are just so friendly. Like, mm -hmm. so like Indonesia, everybody's like very smiley. And in Indonesia, people call you Mr. Oh, and okay. in Philippines, people call you sir or ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like very similar in Indonesia to compared to Philippines. Taiwan is known for being extremely friendly. Um, this sounds really cliche, but I really have met friendly people everywhere. Oh, like okay. I, I really have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but when you go to an island country, and of course Thailand has islands. Like, um, yeah, they have like a bunch of islands, like Koh Phi Phi and things like that. And, and Thai people are very friendly as well. But like, I don't know. When you go to an island, you can really, really, really feel it. I, I think there's oh, something yeah. about being near the water yeah. and just slow just melts you life. Up. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it makes you more uh, chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, yeah. So, other than that, um, is, is there any anything that you would say an expat should watch out for when going about traveling for the first time uh, to South Southeast Asia? Yeah. So, I would say the biggest barrier is mental. I would say the biggest barrier is the barrier in your mind, okay. um, because like there were many times where I talked myself out of getting on the plane. Um, cause I'm like, oh gosh, the plane rides long. You know, I, I'm in a culture that, I, that I'm not familiar with, whatever. <sighs> These places are very easy to travel to. Mm -hmm. Like very, very easy to travel to. Um, in terms of like watching out, my philosophy is, and I know some people are, are going to call me snobby, but my, my philosophy is like, I would never travel to a place unless like I had a healthy budget. Mm -hmm. So I would say like one danger is it, some, sometimes it can, feel like you're it, it can feel like everything is inexpensive when in reality it's just a little bit less than america depending on what you're doing or where you're going mm -hmm. um, like if you eat at a higher end place every everywhere you go it's just going to be a little bit less in america so i would say i would say like be careful about your perception on the money situation because it's very easy to watch a video where somebody claims that they're living on 500 and then you do this and you find out it's a little bit different. So, right, so yeah. Right. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, watch out. I don't know. I don't, there's like, yeah. there's like no safety concerns. There's For like, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mental is one thing. And then I, I like that you mentioned finances because that's just practical about when yeah. you're moving abroad. Be very practical with your finances, mm -hmm. I would say, before you come. Yeah. Now, I think hearing how, like you already are financially independent yeah. by yeah. 31. Uh, you are an entrepreneur and you're able to live your dream life, shape your dream life, leave the nine to five and go travel the world yeah. and have a passionate YouTube channel that you love. I just like hear that and the lifestyle you have as well. I already know you ruffled a few people's feathers and maybe a few people are like, um, how can I do that? Yeah. How, how can I do that? So one thing on the channel we often talk about is how to have an income sure. and how to support yourself when living abroad and sure. just financial independence. Um, can do you have any advice on that? Any take on how someone can reach financial independence and live their best life? Yes. So I'm glad you asked this because it's a big question I get on the channel. How, how can I do what you're doing, Zane? And this is a question that is very simple, but not easy. Mm -hmm. So like I've noticed in life that there are some things that are, that are very simple, but not easy to do. So it's very simple. You either have to have assets, like either cash or stocks or crypto or something, you have to have some type of asset or you have to have cash flow. So it's very simple. If you have assets or cash flow, you can do this. Mm -hmm. But getting assets and creating stable cash flow is very challenging. You mm -hmm. have to be ready to put in a lot of man hours and put in a lot of work. So there's really no silver bullet. There's no like magic bullet to doing this. You really just have to find something that you're passionate about probably do it while you're doing your nine to five and then build up that build up that cash flow. Yeah. I would also say like, you know, for me personally, I took an interest in investing at a very young age, like 22, okay. uh, 22 or so is when I took an interest in investing. So I had like years ahead of me um, in, in terms of that. So that really helped me get to financial independence. Okay. Um, and I would say like the earlier, the better you can start investing and giving yourself some type of financial education that will really benefit you in terms of 
making a transition to financial independence. Absolutely. And I, I love this topic because like, you know, it sounds like nomad capitalists. We don't, yeah, just, cover, yeah, we don't yeah. just cover travel, but also, and even the name of the channel is called the Savvy Expat and what it means to travel savvy. Yeah. And a huge part of that, fine, uh, without finances, travel wouldn't even be possible. So uh, digging more into this topic of like finances, um, you've been to like, Bali and you've been to Thailand, both digital nomad destinations. Yep. What are the most common um, industries that these young guys get into to make money online? Yeah, yeah. So the so the answer is that at this point you can pretty much do anything. Um, you know, my first career was a web developer, a web developer designer, and I notice a lot of people who are graphic designers, web developers, designers, coders, programmers, marketing people, people who work for a marketing agency. Um, and anything connected to that, but freelance is very popular. Okay. Um, and then if you can get your, um, any job that is remote or that offers remote is also a very big one as well. So I would say if you're really interested in doing it, but you're not ready to be an entrepreneur, is there some skill that you have where you can take a remote job around that skill? Mm. Um, I, th I think is a big one. So. So yeah, yeah. For was, sure, for sure. Yeah. So from what it sounds like, it's, it's a matter of learning a high value skill. High value skills are always going to help you. Yeah, mm -hmm. something you can do in a, something you do with mobility um, and also like a, an employer that is flexible on working hours mm -hmm. would also be big because you have to realize like there's a 12 hour difference between Philippines and America. Right. So people are logging in while you're going to bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you have to be ready to, yeah, I would recommend finding a company that's definitely very flexible or even global. Um, so yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's a big part of it. And so what's your, uh, your future plans from here on out, Zane? From here on out, right now, just trying to live in the now and uh, getting ready for a big trip around the Philippines, um, here traveling to the different provinces, and then I'll end up coming back to BGC and I would like to probably spend, spend Christmas in BGC. Um, from there, the plan is to do, I had five countries uh, scheduled for next year mm. for like between January and March-ish, um, and then maybe come back to the Philippines after that. I do have to get back to America in May, um, but I'll probably be back traveling after May. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. All right, so thank you so much for yeah, being absolutely. on. Zane. Thank it was a great time. Man. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Love the information you provided. Thank and you. we'll see you guys in the next video. All God right. bless. Peace.